I sometimes get asked how to get started with Emacs, and I tell them the best way is to do the tutorial. Most people, when they're confronted with Emacs, they can have a hard time with it. They don't even know how to exit once they, maybe they accidentally started it. It can be hard and people try typing exit or something. And since they're currently editing a buffer when they start Emacs, um, it doesn't usually do anything. By the way, control X, control C is the way to exit. I'm not gonna finish the chord because I don't actually wanna exit my buffer. So I'm gonna cancel that with a control G. But function key is a way to get help, F1, with certain options, F1T, is the Emacs tutorial. And this is the best way I really suggest to everybody who's using Emacs for the first time to read through this tutorial and it'll help them. Um, so it says that the control key is what you hold to um, enter a command. And then the meta key is also another something that you might enter to enter different command chords. And it could be the alt key, the option key, or the escape key, depending on your keyboard. Sometimes it maps to multiple of those. The nice thing is the escape key almost always works as a meta key. And so um, just in my long experience in programming, since I've worked on different keyboards and different systems and different environments, wasn't always on one homogenous type of computer. Um, I pretty much trained myself to always use the escape key. It's kind of funny as the meta key. Um, some people, if you're coming from a more homogeneous environment, you may um, just use the Alt key or the Option key to do the same thing. This one is this line here is something pretty interesting to end the Emacs session. Um, it's the first thing that you should learn. I can remember 30 years ago or more ago accidentally starting Emacs and getting trapped in it and not having this little piece of insight about how to get out of it. Um, it's left blank, it says, and then, okay, so how do we see the next screen? It says type control V, so we're gonna type control V. So that's nice. Um, then it says also we can move backwards one by typing the meta V, okay? And you can see that's what we've just seen, control V, meta V. And then it says we can reset the screen to the cursor with control L, so that's really useful. If we move the, the cursor and you want it to be centered, we can just hit control L. So let's forward again, basic cursor control. So it kind of makes sense. Control F is forward. Control B is backward. And then next line in previous line, control P previous, control N next. So to me, that kind of makes perfect sense. And it's kind of innate in me. And the nice thing about all these basic commands, you may be thinking, oh, you know, Emacs is a waste of time. I'm already, you know, an expert in using VI, but all of these commands also work within the shell. And most people don't realize the number of uh, contexts where these commands can come into play and you can actually use all these commands. So you can use all of these commands for editing text in a, a shell in a, on the command line. And another thing that I find very useful because I'm a Mac user, you can use the, all of these commands in text fields on a Mac computer running Mac OS. So this will make you basically a power user on the command line, a power user in your Mac text fields. And obviously it's very useful for um, running Emacs. Okay, we also want a meta F and meta B. So let's see what that does. So meta F is moving by words, meta B is reversing by words. That's useful. Um, so yeah, it says, interestingly, it says meta operations are used for operations related to like word sentences, paragraphs, control operate on things like characters and lines. Okay, so more atomic units. Something I always use, in, in fact, more often than in Emacs, I use it in the shell. Um, I use control E, control A to go to the beginning line, control E 
This happens all the time when I'm editing some big shell command and I want to go to the beginning of it to change one word or one command. And this is super useful in the shell, but it's also useful in Emacs or when you're programming. Okay, and then something else I do all the time is navigate around the buffer. And this is particularly useful, I find, when um, I want to, say, set a mark and so copy and select something. So let's do made a less than, navigate it to the beginning of the buffer, made a greater than, navigate it to the end. And if I set a mark um, with control space and then made it to the beginning, I've actually just selected the entire buffer, control G to cancel that. Uh, so that's super useful. I do that like habitually and all the time. Control, let's navigate with control V back to where we were. Um, and then entering arguments. So almost everything in Emacs can accept a single argument. So you use control U to enter the argument. So control U and they suggest control U8. So if we want to do something, from, you know, eight times so he's going to move forward eight characters with control f or how about control n would move forward eight lines and so that's super useful also as a programmer if you're counting lines or you need to move to a specific line number something like that there's also made x go to line um, but this is also a useful way to do it and this allows you to delete things um, delete lines and so on and so forth and you could do you know say for example delete eight lines this way Okay, and then it shows you how to scroll forward by eight pages. That could be useful. All right, I'm going to skip this part. So, um, so this command I use all the time. Um, Control G is just cancel. So lots of context within Emacs allow you to cancel. All right, I'm going to skip the window part of the tutorial. Um, so let's take a look at the kill command. Kill is super useful and I use it, you know, constantly. It basically is what enables cut and paste in Emacs. You can take any line and control K it, that cuts it, and you can control Y it, that yanks it. You can also do this multiple times and something that's really cool and every time I'm working in a different editor I always completely miss is that the kill ring in Emacs is actually a, a ring buffer so that it stores everything that you've killed so let's say I yank back that but that's not actually the thing that I wanted to copy back I can hit control made a Y um, instead of control Y and it cycles through my kill ring to get back things that I previously killed. Um, and that is amazing. It's an amazing feature. When you're programming, you can, you know, select one block of text, select another block of text, go somewhere else, place that block there, um, decide that you want to Get back the previous text and it's extremely useful and it's a very advanced styling style of editing another really powerful feature of emacs is infinite undo so you know we're doing making changes to this buffer if i just hit control forward slash that's my undo I can undo everything that I've done in the buffer. And this is just extremely helpful and I use it all the time. You can unwind long sequences of changes that you've made and get back to a solid state um, whenever you're working. I'm gonna let you go through the rest of this where you're like saving and opening files, but I just wanted to kind of run through this. F1 tutorial, F1-T is how you get to it and I suggest playing around with it. This is how I started to learn Emacs after I had accidentally opened Emacs a couple of times and failed to be able to get out of it. I figured out uh, somehow I managed to get into this tutorial. I think back then this was very much the old days that it was made a X tutorial, um, but now it's bound to um, 
F1 tutorial and it's incredibly useful because this is uh, something that can, you know, set off an entire um, future of using Emacs.